Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mike's Garage. So as many of you know, my engine's been at the machine shop for the last few months getting some work done and getting it ready so I can put it together and put my supercharger up on top. So as you can see, I ended up having to remove the passenger seat on my S550 to get my block home. Now I had a different vehicle to get it there. It's just coming home, had to do it this way. So once you get your block back to your house uh, or your shop or what have you, you need to double check all of the work that the machine shop did. Now here's a list of everything that I had done and I'm not going to go through each line item, but essentially I had the heads rebuilt. I had the block board 20 over uh, with torque plates. I ended up having the whole rotating assembly balanced and then um, also had uh, the crank polished as well. Um, one other thing that I do want to mention in here, you see 16 exhaust seats replaced. If you're not familiar with this, the C heads that were on the Mach 1s and the Cobras and Marauders and the Aviators, they have a problem that if the head ever overheats, that exhaust seat will loosen up and could potentially fall. And then you have a catastrophic event, which obviously nobody wants. So I replaced those out of an abundance of precaution. Then once uh, uh, once I had it, I ended up using uh, some different measuring tools. So I used an outside micrometer dial bore gauge as seen here uh, to check everything out, make sure that the bores were, uh, were not overboard, not underboard, but essentially where they needed to be. I checked the taper, I checked out of round, just wanted to make sure everything was good before I start putting it together. And as you can see on my gauge here, I was shooting for three and a half thousandths of an inch piston to wall clearance, and I ended up with just a hair over three and a half across all of the cylinders. What does that mean? So the pistons that I have are what's known as 2618 material. They're forged pistons. They could take a ton of boost. I believe 30 PSI for these Wiseco pistons. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough gap for the pistons to expand for the house horsepower levels that I'm going uh, uh, going to be at. So I have my piston wall clearance set up to where I can run about 18 to 19 pounds of boost. And I'll have my ring end gap, which I'll go over in another video, set up to support the same. Now, in this picture, you see that I have a torque plate on top. Whenever that you're checking your bores or file fit in your rings, you need to use a torque plate on aluminum block and uh, also certain uh, cast iron blocks. Uh, because when you don't have a cylinder head on the block, uh, the dimensions of the cylinders change. And they can change up to a thousand and a half uh, of clearance just by removing uh, the heads or a torque plate. So really important because if you don't bore and hone with torque plates and you don't file fit your rings with torque plates on it, your measurements are going to be off and the engine will never be as good as it could have been. So checked everything, everything was good. With the balancing of the whole assembly, I ended up double checking their work. Now obviously I can't spin the crank to see that it's uh, zeroed out. But what I could do is measure each one of the parts and I put it on a scale that I picked up that does a hundredth of a gram and then I wrote down the, the weights of each of each piston, connecting uh, rod, wrist pin, C-clip, ring pack, I mean everything. And I, I spent a good amount of time doing that. And in this uh, picture here you can see that uh, I have a uh, uh, wrist pin on it and then in the next I've got a ring pack. So after that was all done I was comparing the weights that I had against what the machinist had and the machinist was only going to a gram whereas I was going to a hundredth of a gram so I was able to get things more dialed in than he did and when it's all said and done I balanced my rotating assembly to about a half a gram and then I took it a step further and you can see right here my little post-it notes of all the different weights but I took it a step further and I took the highest and lowest of each one of the uh, uh, 
uh, pistons, rods, you know, so on and so forth. And I put them on the same journal of the crank. So in this last uh, picture, uh, this is my build sheet. And you can see, you know, everything that I've done on it, all my measurements and everything I've checked. And it's always extremely good to have a build sheet, especially if you want to uh, look back later on to see how it was done. Or if you have any issues, you can, you know, pinpoint what uh, potentially happened. Um, but you can see that it's color coded and uh, the cylinders of the same color are basically on the same journal. So green with green and red with red and so on and so forth. And by doing that, I was able to get my total balance as far as what the crankshaft would see down to about a quarter of a gram. Which if you get down to a quarter of a gram, you're, you're really good. I mean, that, that means that you're rotating assembly. You could probably spin it up to eight, 9,000 RPMs, no problem. Now, my heads won't do that because I'm using uh, stock uh, OEM replacement springs. But as far as the rotating assembly goes, it's, it's spot on. So, but that's it. I'll have a lot more videos of the build. Um, I'll go over ring end gap. I'll go over uh, assembling a short block. A uh, whole bunch of goodies coming up. So stay tuned. Uh, please like, subscribe, and tick the little bell. And once again, thank you for watching Mike's Garage.